Question 7. 8. State the relative basicity of ethanamide, diethylamine, and ethylamine. First, you need to know the nitrogen in the uh, amide is a non basic nitrogen because the lone pair on the nitrogen it can delocalize and uh, into the carbonyl group and eventually form this so which means the lone pair on nitrogen is less available so less able to uh, gain the uh, hydrogen ion so we say that this is a non basic nitrogen means the basic character is not really there and of course the diethylamine it has two alkyl group and these two they are electron donating group which will push electrons to the nitrogen and nitrogen now it has more electron density the lone pair on nitrogen is more available and of course uh, this uh, it, uh, ethyl amine just has one alkyl group so the basic city is lesser than the diethyl amine okay so first you need to put the trend means uh, which one is the most basic diethyl amine followed by ethyl amine and ethanamide okay so this one is the explanation uh, basic city depends on ability of lone pair on nitrogen to accept H plus more available or higher ability then it can gain more H plus so it's more basic so that ethyl amine has two ethyl group which able to donate electron increase electron density on nitrogen and ethyl amide is relatively less basic as the lone pair on nitrogen is delocalized in the carbonyl group B the amino acid and the line okay this one act as a buffer part one define buffer solution okay this one is very easy solutions that able to resist change in pH when a small amount of acid or alkaline is added two marks resist change in pH when small amount of acid or alkaline added Okay, write two equations to show uh, an uh, <coughs> aqueous solution of aniline can act as a buffer solution. So means uh, the COOH or the uh, NH2 in this uh, uh, aniline will react with the H plus or the hydroxide. Okay, so if the acid added means extra hydrogen ion. So this one, uh, it will react with the basic side, the NH2. So the nitrogen will gain this proton and it will form this ammonium. If hydroxide added, so hydroxide will react with the carboxylic acid group and it will get the protons from the carboxylic acid from H2O and it will form salt, carboxylic salt. Okay, so these are the two equations that you need to put. Okay, part C. Glutamic acid is another amino acid that can act as a buffer. So this is a glutamic acid. Uh, it has another COOH in the side chain here. Okay, draw the skeleton formula uh, for this glutamic acid. You just follow this and you try to uh, get this structure done right okay so uh, this uh, COOH okay and this NCOH NH2 okay so this is the carbon C and followed by the side chain right CH2 CH2 COOH so this is the skeleton formula okay part two 
draw the structure for dipeptide means it must involve two amino acid, uh, which is the the aniline and the glutamic acid. It must be the aniline first, followed by glutamic acid. Must follow this order. And <clears throat> the dipeptide bond uh, form should be displayed. So first, you need to know the uh, structure of the uh, this uh, amino acid. Okay, so this one plus this one, and of course the NH two will react with the COOH and remove water. So undergo condensation, and it will form the CONH. So here remove OH, here remove one H. So it will form the CONH, the uh, this uh, peptide bond, and the remaining uh, structure will uh, will not change, right? Just follow the amino acid itself. So this one is the from the aniline, and this one is from the glutamic acid. Or you can actually draw the display like this. Actually, these two they are the same. Depends on your preference. Part D, the isoelectric point of aniline is uh, 6.0 and glutamic acid is 3.2. Uh, so isoelectric point means uh, at this pH, uh, neither positive nor negative ions dominate. Means uh, it will be charge neutral. A mixture of dipeptide Okay, this is uh, what we discussed just now, the aniline and glutamic acid. And it's cooled to constituents amino acid, the aniline and glutamic acid. So means now uh, in the mixture, there are three compounds, glutamic acid, aniline, and the dipeptide. And this mixture is analyzed by electrophoresis at pH 6. So at pH 6, we know that the aniline, it will be charge neutral because it's the isoelectric point of aniline, means uh, the, <coughs> the point here, so the mixture that applied this point, so the aniline will not move. So it will not move to positive pole or negative pole because at pH 6 uh, is uh, uh, charge neutral and at pH 6 we know that the glutamic acid and the dipeptide because they have two COOH group here okay glutamic acid it has one two COOH group and the dipeptide also it has one two COOH group and this one is above, pH 6 is above the isoelectric point of these two. So therefore, the COOH will react and it will form the negative ion, means the uh, carboxylate. So means it will form COO negative and therefore it will be a negative charge. So when the species is negative charge, then it will attract to the positive pole. And the glutamic acid is uh, smaller in size, so it can actually move faster. So therefore, glutamic acid will be nearer to positive pole, and the dipeptide will be slow because size is larger. So this is how uh, you draw okay, for this electrophoresis. Okay, draw the three spot, told you already just now, and the line. Okay, uh, so not, not really moved, followed by this uh, dipeptide, and the one that go fastest is the glutamic acid. And you just explain, as I told you just now. Okay, and the line is the deuteron ion, means uh, it's, uh, it has the charge negative and positive together, charge neutral, um, <clears throat> and therefore it's not moved. Glutamic acid and this uh, dipeptide, are negatively charged so therefore they will move towards the positive pole ok 
okay, glutamic acid is smaller, therefore it's move faster okay, towards the positive pole. Okay, part E, this one is the uh, proton uh, NMR. So the proton NMR of the spectrum G, this is the compound G, uh, which uh, the uh, G dissolve in the D2O. When it dissolve in D2O, we know that uh, the NH2, this peak will disappear because it undergo pro uh, this uh, proton exchange. The H will change exchange with the D here and it will not give any signals. So therefore, it will just show this proton, this proton, and this proton, three signals only. Okay, so from here we know that okay, the CH3 here will form a singlet here because uh, this CH3 is next to O, so it's around three point something singlet. And this one is this CH3 because it's next to the alkyl group. So it will form one okay, plus one here. So one plus one is doublet. So this one will form a doublet around one point something. Right. So it's actually this one. Okay, when the proton okay, is the just uh, next to the alkyl group, so it will be this chemical shift range around one point something. <clears throat> and again, this one because this alkyl group is next to oxygen, so it's around uh, three to four. Uh, is this one alkyl next to electronegative atom, so it's uh, around three point two to four, right? And of course, this one. This one is CH, so this one CH. This H will couple with the CH3 here, so 1 plus 3 will form quartet. So this signal, this four peaks there, we call quartet. So this is one signal. And this proton is next to the carbonyl group, and of course, uh, with the electronegative atom, so it will be around 4, right here, this one. Alq next to electronegative atom, so it's this range. So therefore, we will see a quartet at four, a singlet around one point something, oh, sorry, a doublet around one point something, and a singlet around three point something here. So this is the the splitting, right? All the signals for this uh, uh, compound G, right? So uh, you just fill in the table, table one. So 1.4 ppm, so it's a doublet again, 1.4 ppm. So this splitting we call doublet. Okay, so two peaks here, so this we call doublet. Okay, and <coughs> so numbers of protons responsible for this peak. Okay, so this one is a CH3. Okay, uh, so to let you to see easier, so uh, okay. This is the one, this CH3, okay, coupled with this H, right, so this will form doublet. So this is the first signal, okay, 3.5 ppm, so it's a singlet, uh, so it's referred to this, this one, this one, CH3, so it will be a singlet, 3 uh, protons are uh, responsible, right? Okay, this one. And numbers of proton on adjacent carbon. So adjacent carbon, no adjacent carbon. That's why it's zero here. This one adjacent carbon means CH three adjacent carbon is this one, and it has one proton, so it's one. Okay, and the uh, quartet. So which uh, refer to this one now? Okay, this one, this proton. Okay, couple with this uh, three proton, so one plus three, so it's give quartet. And it's just one protons responsible for this peak. And adjacent carbon in this one, this one, it has three protons, so you just put three here. So fill in all, you get three marks. Okay, part two. The proton uh, NMR 
of the G dissolved in uh, now is CdCl3, not D2O. So therefore, we know that the NH2 now will show, means this one it will appear. So there will be one extra peak for the NH2 seen in the CdCl3. Okay, why no uh, NH2 peak shown in this uh, D2O uh, in the previous uh, NMR spectrum? Because it's undergo this one, it's undergo proton exchange with D in D2O. Okay, that's all. Thank you.